Hey, we begin with a Mishnah, which begins on the last two lines in the Afchav, Dalid. We have one additional Mishnah in the middle of the Daf, and conclude with our third Mishnah for the Daf. So we begin discussing cases where you do have to return something, you have to chayv l'hachrez, you have to announce that you found them. Many of these are in contrast to the cases listed in the first Mishnah in the parak which you do not have to return. So the mission says as follows, if you find fruits inside a kli, money inside a wallet, or even an empty kli or wallet, you have to return those. The assumption is that there's a simon on the kli or on the wallet. If you find piles of fruits, piles of mm, coins, <clears throat> three coins, one on top of the other, or if you find the bundles in Rosh Hashanah as opposed to Rosh Hashanah which we learned in the first Mishnah, or if you find loaves of bread made by a Baal bais, that is, home-baked bread as opposed to store-bought, or rolls of wool taken from a factory as opposed to from a country where they're all the same, or jugs of oil, jugs of wine, all these one needs to return. <clears throat> now, the Gemara focuses on the case of Klee. So he said that you, re- you have to return the Klee and the fruits that are in it, you have to return the wallet and the money that is in it, if it is in it, that implies if it is near it, then you won't have to return the money. You may, you'll still have to return the the kli, the basket, and the wallet, because there's a simon on that. But the money or the fruits that are near it, you would not have to return. The verse says we actually have a price that says this way. The price says if you find the kli and fruits in front of it, if you find the wallet and money in front of it, you can keep the money and the fruits. Even though you have to return the wallet and the kli, you don't have to assume that it came from the same one. Now, if part of it is in the kli, and part of it is spilled out of the clee, and part of it is in the wallet, and part of it is out of the wallet, then you do have to return all of it. Of course, you have to be machers on the clean and on the wallet, or if you find the owner, then you have to return the fruits as well, because it clearly came from inside. The Bryce says this is a contradiction to this halacha. We have another Bryce that says, if, some, if you find something which does not have a simon, next to something which has a simon, you have to return both of them. <clears throat> if the owner of the one with the simon comes, gives the simon, claims it, and says that the other one is not his, then you can keep that one. You don't have to try to find the owner of that, because there's no simon on that, and clearly the one who owns the object with the simon did not own that, like he said. So it's a stira to our Mishnah and the price that we just brought that says that you do not have to return what is near the kli, what is near the wallet with the simon. So how do you make these fit together? So it says, it's not a kasha. One is talking about where it was a barrel with flax, and the other is talking about where it was a basket of fruit. A barrel of flax, if the flax that is near it would have fallen out of the barrel, you would still have some left in the barrel. It can't come out without leaving something in it. The fruits could have all fallen out of the basket, and therefore you have to assume that they came from inside the basket. Now, there must give a number of answers here on the similar theme, where you're practically speaking, one situation you should assume that what's next to the clea came from the clea, and one you have no reason to assume that. Rav Papa says both Bryce and Mishnah are discussing there are fruits next to a basket, the difference is in one, there's a fruit left in the basket, and the one, there is no fruit left in the basket. Another answer, both of them are referring to where there's nothing left in the basket. One's talking about where the opening, the lid, the opening of the kli is facing the fruits, and one is talking about where it's turned away from the fruits. And another answer is that both referring to where the face of the kli, the opening, is facing towards the fruits on the ground. And the difference is, one, there is a lid, there's a lip around the opening of the kli, which would prevent things from falling out completely. Something would have to stay behind, and there's nothing left behind. There you could assume that it didn't come from in there. And the other, there is no lip, and it's possible that everything fell out and still came from in there, and then you would have to assume that what fell out actually fell out and belongs to the owner. Okay, going back to the mission, the mission said if you find piles of fruits and piles of money, what's a simon on those? Gemara assumes it's the number of piles that are there. There's a proof that the number is a simon. So Gemara, no, it could just be you should change the wording from Tzibure Paris to Tzibur Paris, a pile of money, and the simon is the place that it's in. It says, okay, so it's a proof that place is a simon. It says, but the correct reading could be Tzibure, plural, and therefore it's really the number, so you can't prove either one. Okay, next line in the mission, said that you find three coins stacked on top of each other. Lamar is going to discuss what type of stacking is a simon. Now, the it's not clear initially, whether the simon is that they are stacked, the fact that they are stacked just shows that it was put there and the person's going to come back for it. Um, he'll remember that he left it somewhere and then he'll come back and try to find it. And then you could return it to him with the simon and the simon would be either the place or the number of coins that there were. So the Gemara says, what type of situation do we consider to be that it's stacked up that you should return it? It says, or Yitzchak, 
Migdala, it's mainly like Migdala, and that's why it's called Migdala. Migdala is a tower, it means to say that the three coins were stacked in order from largest to smallest from the ground up. The Gemara brings a Bryce, which says this as well. The Bryce says, if you find scattered money, you can keep it. If you find money that's stacked up like a tower that you have to return. And again, it defines that stacked up means three coins, one on top of the other. So now the Gemara asks that there should be a third level. Instead of the, between scattered and st- st- stacked up, you should have where they're kind of lopsided or haphazardly on top of each other, like half on another coin and half on the ground. So that's what the Gemara calls Meshal Chafi Shechufi. So what about that? There's a contradiction in the Bryce of whether that's considered to be something you have to return or not. If you say only scattered you can keep, that would imply that if it's uh, lying haphazardly on top of each other, that you would have to return. But if you say that only stacked up you have to return, that would imply that this middle case you're allowed to keep. So the more answer is this, all that this Bryce says, if it's not stacked, that's considered scattered. So when it's half on and half off each other, that's also considered to be scattered. Says the now, further, Reb Hanina says this only is true if the three coins are of three different kings, not if they are of one king, then you don't have to return it. Umar assumes that means that the face that's on the coin is different for all three. Like, you can't have three quarters. You would need a quarter, a nickel, and a dime. We'll have three different faces on them. Says the Gemara, why should that have anything to do with it? If it's all one king or if it's two different kings, who cares? If it's stacked, then it was put there on purpose. If it's not stacked, then it just fell. My answer is, we don't mean to say that it's the same face, we mean to say that it's the same size. If all three coins are the exact same size, that's not a real stack like a tower. That's just put on top of each other, that you could assume fell that way. And therefore you don't have to return it. However, if it's stacked from largest to smallest, now already you have a reason to assume that it has to be that it was placed there, and therefore you should re- re- return it. It says, when further, Rabbi Eichelin says, even if it's of one king, meaning even if it's of the same size, you should still return it. Now, how do you return it? So, the Mara first says, you announce that I found this amount of coins. You say, I found three coins. And the other person comes and says, they were stacked, and that's the simon. So, the Gemara, then if it, if it should be two coins, it should be like that as well. If the number is something you're <coughs> announcing, so announce even the two. So, the Mara says, no. If I'm to claim it by saying two is not enough. Says Ravina, no, he just says coins, and coins is plural, and therefore two doesn't leave anything to the imagination. Now, the Gemara asks further, what happens if the coins are found lined up in a row on the ground? What happens if they're found in a circle? What happens if they're found laid out like a triangle? What if they're found like a ladder, which Rashi says means one on top of the other halfway? So half on, half off, half on, half off in a stack. So what's halacha there? The Gemara says we could at least resolve one of these, Rav Nachman said in Rav Baravua, Anyone which you can lift on one stick, that if you stick a toothpick under them, you'll be able to pick them all up at once. That is, there is a common width that is common to everyone in the stack. Those are all something you need to return. And therefore, the case of the ones that are half on and half off, that would qualify and you have to return it. Says so Ashi, further, <clears throat> we ask, what if it is like Avni Base Kulis? Base Kulis is a reference to an Avodah that has rocks that are made like a pyramid, <clears throat> let's say two on the ground and one on top, half on and half uh, half on each of the two in the row below it. So what's the halacha there? So the Mara wants to bring a rice up. If you find money that are scattered, then you're allowed to keep them. If you found them like the base coolis, then you have to return them. And base coolis is defined as one here, one here, and one on top in between them. This is Gemara, another. Bryce says, someone who finds a coin, a sella, in the street, and his friend finds him and says, it's mine, it was new, it was from Nizer, from Nero the Caesar, or it was from some other king that's not a raya, you don't have to return it to him, even if his name is written on it. Coins and other types of currency, you can't have a simon on, because it could be that it was his at some point, but he spent it. And that's why he knows the simon, but it's not his anymore. These things change possession too quickly for there to be a simon, and therefore you never have to return money at all. Okay, now we get to our next mission, which gets into the question of when is something lost? Maybe you'll find something, it's not lost. Maybe the owner put it there and he's coming back for it. And if you'll pick it up and try to return it, if there's no simon, you're for sure going to make it that it's impossible for him to retrieve. And if there is a simon, it's hard to find him. 
Samar says, here are situations in which things might not be lost at all. If you find something behind the fence, behind the wall, behind a wooden fence, or if you find birds tied it together, or if you find them on the walking paths between the fields, don't touch these things, because you're just going to make it worse. They may not be lost. And now, a uh, Mishnah which we found, a halacha which we saw quoted on the last half, if you find a kli in the garbage, if it's covered, don't touch it, because it was probably put there and hidden there. If it's revealed, then it's thrown out, or it's hefker, or it's lost, then you could take it and announce it. So says, Gemara, what's the reason of all these things? So the Gemara says, we have to assume somebody placed it there, and if you will take it, since there's no simon, the owner won't be able to retrieve it. Therefore, leave it, and maybe he'll come back for it. Now, the Gemara says, why do you say there's no simon? If you're talking about birds that are tied together, there's a string, and the string has a knot. So the type of knot is a simon. So the Gemara says, that they're tied by their wings, which everybody ties them that way, and there's no simon in that. It says, we're washing the place be simon. It says, we're looking for Chama. They're hobbled, and they're still able to move around. And therefore, it's not in the same place where the person left it. And he can't give you a simon as to where it is. So the Gemara says, if it's hobbled, so then what are you telling me? Because you found it behind the wall, or you found it on the walking path. It hobbled there on its own. We're saying it could have come from anywhere. So the Gemara says... You're right. It could be that it came from somewhere else, and it could be that it's lost because it was left somewhere else. However, it also could be that it was put down and came from here. So it's a suffix. It's not clear if it was put there on purpose or not. The halacha is, anything which could be that it was put there on purpose, don't take it because you could be ruining the person's chance to come back and get it. If you do pick it up and you took it, now you can't return it, so there's nothing you can do, and you'll have to hold on to it. <clears throat> Now, so this is more further. We have the Lach, if you found a clean a, the garbage, if it's covered, you shouldn't touch it. If it's exposed, then you should take it and try to return it. So I said this contradicts another rice that we saw. If you find a clean hidden in the garbage, take it and return it. Because the garbage will be cleared out. So that Bryce says, return it because it's going to be cleared out and the person's going to lose it. This one, the Mishnah says, leave it. It's a kasha, says Rosavid, it's not a kasha. One is referring to plates and cups, one is talking about knives and forks. Plates and cups you should leave there. Uh, knives and forks you should take in return. What's the reason? Plates and cups are large, and you should assume that people will put it there on purpose. There's no other way that it ended up there. Knives and forks are small, they could have just got thrown out with the meal. And therefore, you should assume that they were just thrown there, and therefore they are hefker. The Mar is going to question this soon and explain it more. Rav Papa gives a different answer. Rav Papa says both are referring to plates and cups. One is referring to where it's a trash heap which is generally cleaned out, and uh, the trash is transferred away. And one is referring to a trash heap which is not cleaned out. So we're asked if it's one that's cleaned out, then the person who threw it there is throwing it out on purpose. It's a vedamitas. He knows he's going to lose it forever. So where it says, no, it's referring to where it was usually not cleaned out. But now, the owner decided to clean it out, and that is a surprise. The person who left it there did not know. So it's not a vedamitas. But on the other hand, it's about to be cleaned out, so you have to return it. But the, one, the other one is not being cleaned out, and therefore, you're better off leaving it there so the owner could come back and find it. So the it says... Now, let's go back to Rezvid for a minute. What does it mean when the rest said because the garbage dumps are usually cleaned out? According to him, and it's nothing to do with whether they're cleaned out or not. It has to do with whether the person put it there or he didn't realize that it was there. If it was a plate and a cup, he must have put it there. If it was a knife and a fork, he didn't realize. So what does that have to do with whether it's being cleared? So the answer is when we say that it's the way of the garbage to be cleared, we don't mean that you clear out the garbage. You mean you clear out your table and end up throwing away the small caleb in there. That's what clearing means. So that's what it means to say that if it's a knife and a fork, he probably cleared off his table and just end throwing it up all into there as well. Okay, now we start the next Mishnah. <clears throat> we'll do a bit of Gemara and with this end. Mishnah says, if you find a heap of rocks, that is a wall that collapsed, or if you find an old wall, so that you can keep it because you assume it was there for a long time. If you find it in a new wall, so it depends where. If it's on the inner, assuming it's the wall of a house. If it's on the inner part of the wall, and it belongs to the person who owns the house. If it's on the outer part of the wall, it's put there from someone in the street, and you could assume that he's gone and he's not coming back for it, and you're allowed to keep it for yourself. Now, if it was a house that he rents out to many individuals, even inside the house he could keep it, because it could have been from an old renter, there's no way of knowing whose it was. Okay, says the Gemara. 
why in a heap of rocks or an old wall are you allowed to keep it? Because you could tell the owner, this could have been here since before you moved in. It could have been here from the time of the Emoiri, who had her to sell before Kal Yisrael ever came from its time. So Mara says, the Emoiri only... Only the Emiri hide things in the walls. You saw them. They're not. Someone says, no, we're talking about where it was very rusty. It's clearly there for a long time, and therefore you no longer have a claim on it.